Hey everybody, this is Sam and welcome to lesson nine of our prerequisites. Let's take a look what we're talking about today. All right, so how to listen, frequencies and frequency bands. Okay, so let's take a look. All right, in this lesson, we're gonna go over what frequencies are, the different frequency bands and how to identify them. All right, so what are frequencies? Well, frequencies are the amount of vibrations a sound wave has in a given second. It's typically measured in Hertz. Note, also known as notes. And we'll talk more about this in level one pre-production. Okay, so what frequencies do we hear? Our human range of hearing only goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, or 20,000 hertz. This can be categorized into different groups called bands. So the question then becomes, how many frequency bands are there, and what are they? Hint, there are seven. Okay, so what are the frequency bands? That's it, here are the seven. Okay, so we have our subs, which are 20 hertz to 60 hertz, our lows, which are 60 hertz to 250 hertz, our low mids, which were 250 to 500 hertz, and our mid mids, which are 500 to 2 kilohertz, or 2000 hertz. Our high mids is going to be 2 kilohertz to 6 kilohertz. Our high definition is going to be 6 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz, and our high air is going to be 10 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. Okay, so at this point, we're going to just break down those frequency bands a little bit more. But remember, we can always reference these. We're just making it so we know what we're sort of looking for and knowing how to categorize what we're hearing. So let's take a look. That first band is going to be the subs. Remember, this is 20 hertz to 60 hertz. Notes on this one, okay? This is felt more than heard, okay? If it's too much, it's typically muddy. If it's not enough, it feels weak. And if it's just right, it feels really powerful. And notice that these are kind of vague words because these will change depending on the actual production. And a lot of instruments that sit in this range are going to be the 808s, synth basses, electric basses, but the subs of the electric basses, and like the kick drum thud. That brings us to our lows, which are gonna be 60 hertz to 250 hertz. And the notes on this one, they're gonna be felt as punch or weight in a mix. Uh, or on an instrument rather, uh, and too much is going to be boomy, and not enough is going to feel really thin, but just right, it feels like a really fat sound. It feels like it's just blowing up the speakers, but in a good way, okay? And a lot of instruments that show on this are going to be the bass and tenor vocal, which is going to be the body of the vocal itself. Uh, we're going to have that kick drum punch. So where we had thud before, now we have punch. Now these words can change. They don't actually mean anything. So again, this is a time where you might want to write things down as how they feel for you. That's going to help you remember it more. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so back into the lows, we have a bass and a guitar. That's going to be the fullness. And then the snare drum, think of like the body or the tone. And again, we're going to break all this down as we go. And then we have our low mids, 250 to 500 hertz. And that's going to be felt as warmth or closeness. Too much is going to feel a little bit muffled, so it's going to feel a little bit like this. And then not enough is going to feel a little far away, so it's going to feel something like this. And just right is going to feel really full. And some of the instruments, if we want to break it down, it's going to be uh, soprano vocal. Uh, it's going to be the body. Uh, we've got an alto vocal, also the body, because they're not that far off on the frequency spectrum. And then we've got the electric guitar, which is going to be the fullness again. And then we have the piano or the keys. It's going to be our body. And that's going to bring us to our mid mids and the magic is in the mids. Okay. So what I mean by that is most speakers don't really play super, super low stuff. They just don't have the ability to actually do it. So we need to make sure the mid range is really comfortable and really balanced because that's what we hear everywhere. If you have it on these small Genelex or like a Google home or something like that, that's what matters. And we're going to break that down even further. So let's take a look. All right, so again, that magic is in the midge. And if we have too much, it's actually gonna feel tiny. And if we don't have enough, it feels a little hollow. And if it's just right, the whole thing just feels open. And by thing, I mean the mix itself, okay? And more notes on this one, everything lives here, so make room. We wanna prioritize instruments by importance, okay? And when the mids are balanced, the mix will translate across everything. And by translate, I mean it'll play in your car, it'll sound good on your headphones, your earbuds, your Google Home, your laptop speakers, all that stuff. That brings us to our high mids. That's gonna be two kilohertz to four kilohertz. Also, it should be stated that kilohertz is shortened for K. So if I say two kilohertz or if I say 2K, that means the same thing. Okay, so that brings us back to our high mids, and our high mids are going to add detail. Too much is going to give you ear fatigue, not enough is going to feel dull, and just right is going to feel clear and close. Okay, so some of the instruments to sort of focus on is going to be vocals, which is going to give a lot of clarity, the kick drum, which is going to give us a lot of snap, uh, the snare drum is going to give us a lot of whack, and then when boosted, the source moves forward in the mix, and we'll go over that in level two. 
And then that brings us to the high definition, which is going to be 4 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. Okay? And this is going to be felt as definition, very defined sound. And too much is going to feel a little crispy. Not enough is going to feel far away. And just right is actually defined, right? So we can hear everything, but it's not hurting our ears might be a way to think about that. For the instruments, we have vocal sibilance. And if you don't know what that is, that's what it is. The S's, the harsh stuff that we can't get out. So if you have too much of that, that's where it's living. It's going to be in that 4K to 10K range. And the drums, cymbals, or hi-hats. Okay, all the brilliance of the drums comes out of here. And it adds interest in a mix or on an instrument itself. It is more effective over a mix, but these are just good things to know and talk about. All right, so the high air. It's going to be our last band, okay? And it's going to be 10 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. And the notes on this one are going to be felt as brilliance or air. So if we think of like the, that's like the whistling that we hear when the wind blows, that's kind of where this lives. And then too much is going to feel brittle and not enough is going to feel flat. Just right, the whole mix just feels clear. Everything just feels nice and open. And I know that I am reusing some words and that's why this is a little confusing. This will make more sense as we continue through the levels though. Let's keep going. Okay, and then just to sum it up, this is all of the frequencies. This is kind of what we wanna focus on, okay? So our subs are gonna be power, our lows are gonna be the punch or the weight of the mix, the low mids are gonna be that warmth or that closeness, the mid mids are gonna be that openness or the clarity, uh, the high mids are going to be presence, and the highs overall are just gonna add excitement. So we've got that definition from six to 10K, or that we have that high air from 10 to 20K. Okay, and the point to really understand here is that we already understand how sound makes us feel. And even if we're talking about music, that is all it really is. It's just sound. Remember that. Okay? So the bands of frequencies are just a tool to help us organize these feelings, meaning it is up to you to internalize how the different frequency bands can help you categorize the emotional response you have from a sound. Note on this one, how you internalize this doesn't need to make sense to anyone except yourself. So what I mean by that is when I'm explaining stuff and we're listening to things, write it down how it makes you feel. Because if you internalize it, you'll remember that sound because you already feel it that way. So we don't have to take something that we don't know and try to learn it. What we're doing is making sense of what we already know. And that's an important understanding to really have because you already know all of this stuff. Okay, let's keep going. All right, and then that leads us to the question to answer. How do we make sense of how sound makes us feel? And we're going to answer that question in different ways throughout all of the levels and all of the lessons in those levels. So that being said, good job on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.